Hello everybody, welcome back to Battle Angel Alita! I can actually say Battle Angel Alita in this episode because that is our name, Alita! And there goes Gully, the cat! Come back! Choto! Matete ba! So here we are, everybody. Want to welcome you back to the game. I am your host, East Guru. And as Alita here, we are chasing after the cat. And Chaos sort of appeared here, uh, telling us that he's been hacking into the computer system and was finally able to hack in and show his visage here. And of course, he's uh, calling her Gully. And Alita says, who are you? It's like, I can't believe it. You're joking, right? You don't know who I am? Remember from, from the last episode and several episodes previously, you know, Chaos is... Even though he has a creepy name like a supervillain, he's actually been pretty helpful since uh, his introduction into the story. Uh, Chaos is... A Nova son, and he's definitely been helpful since the beginning. So Alita here is saying, my name is Alita, not Gully. And he says, no, you're wrong. He's like, uh, I'm not talking about the cat, I'm talking about you. You are Gully. And Alita's like, me? I'm not Gully, I'm Alita. Kia says, no, you're wrong. Your real name is Gully. So, yeah. We're having this sort of back and forth fight here. Chaos keeps insisting that she's Gully, and she keeps insisting that her name is Alita. So Chaos is trying to explain here that she's trapped in Nova's uh, Uroboros you know, computer system simulation. And of course, you know, Nova's trying to rewrite and manipulate her so that he can experiment on her and be, you know, the plaything. Because if, you know, Gully is violent and, you know, fighting, he can't really do much with her. But if he can make her passive, you know, and easy to deal with, then maybe Nova can experiment on her. So I suppose that's why Nova's doing this, going to great lengths. Chaos is explaining that 10 years ago, you know, this place was destroyed where they're standing right now. He's like, you need to remember, Gully, you know, this place doesn't exist anymore. Edo's shop. So she's got a kind of a backflash here. Remember when it was completely destroyed by Zapan? And she's wondering what this Black Flash is about. Because remember, she still has a human brain, a full human brain, which has the memories. And of course, Nova appears. <laughs> Kia says, crap, I've been found already. Nova says, of course you have. This is my simulation, my world that I've created. He's impressed that Chaos was able to hack in. Okay, so after a long conversation there, I'll try to cut these conversations short. Um, but yeah, this is basically like playing a digital comic now. So let's go to Factory 33. So we're back to the old map here, you know, from the very beginning of the game, all of the original areas. But uh, things are going to be a little different. You know, instead of this being the real, you know, grungy, grimy world that uh, we're used to, this is sort of a happy version. You know, and it's all made for, you know, Gully here to fool her into kind of living a different lifestyle. Actually, this is kind of the lifestyle that Ido originally wanted. You know, he wanted her to just grow up and, and be a normal girl and, you know, uh, you know, just have a happy life. But she chose the life of a warrior. 
which was almost in her DNA pretty much kind of thing. So Alita's asking if Gully is registered here. And Decuman says, you mean the cat? So yes, the cat was hurt. I need to find him. So Dekiman is going to help her. And once again, uh, chaos appears here. And in each of these scenes, basically, he's going to kind of explain. You know, he's trying to get her memories back. <laughs> she looks funny with the glasses on. You know, he's trying to explain to her about Zalem now. And of course, she gets the back flash of it floating in the sky. Starting to remember. Even her hairstyle is a little different here. And Chaos is being forcefully ejected from the world again by Nova. You know, I, I think it would be creepy, like, suddenly Nova's standing there. It's like, dude, are you following me, old man? Are you, like, total stalker? So Alita's asking, what's Zalem? Have you ever heard of that? Nova's like, Zalem? I have no idea what that is. You know, once again, he's creating this imaginary world for her. Hey, there's the dog and Gonza. So we're going to go into the non-destroyed Kansas, Bar Kansas again. Now this feels uh, really interesting to me. I mean, I know it's a lot of story stuff, so um, it may not be exciting for you guys to watch, but I hope it is because this is pretty interesting for me. There's Koyomi-chan as a baby there again. Oh, and there's Zapan sitting in Bar, Kansas. Konnichiwa, Zapan-san. See, Alita's like all nice and polite. Yo, Alita-chan, Janeka. It's like, you're looking good as always. So this version of Zapan is like all nice and buddy and friendly and, you know, like completely not like the original Zapan. So she's asking about the cat again. And of course we get the hint, ah, oh, Galida. There's the cat named Gully. So this is really interesting. Uh, this is really symbolic where a gully, the cat, is leading Alita around these places where, you know, the original gully went. If you can wrap your head around that. So it's kind of like, a, you know, a trip down memory lane where we're actually chasing gully the cat, which is going to all the places where gully has her important memories. And then check it out. Zapan is just suddenly like a puppet, not moving, just sitting there. You know, and she's wondering, why is, you know, why is he suddenly just sitting there like a zombie? And Chaos appears saying, you know, this is not a real world. Uh, Gully, you need to wake up. You know, this is all fake. Um, it's been, you know, manufactured. And it's a false world. And so that version of Zapan is not real. You know, the real Zapan is dead and you killed him. So, of course, we're going to have another backflash here, probably. The backflash of the real Zapan, you know, who threatened her, and uh, we had the fights with him, of course. And so she's remembering some of these backflashes now. And once again, uh, Nova appeared and kicked uh, Chaos out of the simulation. Uh, rinse and repeat. I love it. We, we're at the warehouse section now, and here's the uh, samurai bounty hunter. But he's like all super friendly and happy, and you know, he's like, Oh, I'll help you find the cat. It's like that cat's name is Gully. She's, uh, you know, got an injury, and you know, she needs some medicine, so I need to bring her back home. And he's like, Okay, I'll help you find her. 
it's kind of funny because you have all these uh, characters from the beginning of the game and they're acting completely different than you know what they originally were of course I find it kind of interesting their dialogue is just all you know friendly and happy like everybody's buddy buddy and everything's good nothing bad happens here nobody's fighting I forgot to mention uh, when I was talking to Zapan, it was a long shortcut, but he was like, he was bored as a bounty hunter because he was like saying, oh, nothing bad ever happens here, you know, in Scrap Iron City. I've never, you know, I don't have any bad, you know, people to chase and I don't have any bounties to do. So Zapan was really bored being a uh, hunter warrior or a bounty hunter because he had nothing to do because everything was peaceful here. And uh, if you remember, this was uh, uh, Miguel, one of the bosses we fought way back in episode two or three or something. But now he's this friendly vampire guy, not vampire, a uh, werewolf. Werewolf mech creature guy, I don't know. And of course, he's going to be a nice guy and also help us out. I'm just going to you know, kind of skip through the dialogue a little bit, but uh, yeah, when, when reading the dialogue, when I first went through this, uh, it's pretty funny uh, reading what all the uh, characters say and everything. Um, when I record my videos, I do a lot of test runs kind of first, um, you know, to see what's coming up, and then I actually do a recording, so some of it I've previously seen. And that way I feel like I can help maybe translate the story better or help explain what's going on a little bit better. And of course, we're back up here on the uh, roof where uh, we first met Yugo. And of course, in this world, Yugo's alive and he was chilling here, relaxing, looking up at the sky. Konnichiwa. I love it. Like, Gully's just really polite here. Yugo's really polite here and he's just sunbathing looking up into the sky but the dialogue is different if you remember originally uh yugo was looking up enjoying the sky view of zalim because that's where he wanted to go but here it's just the beautiful sky with nothing in it you know there is no zalim to be seen so alita's like wow you're right it's a beautiful view from here So she wants to ask Yugo if, uh, you know, Yugo's seen uh, Gali, the cat running around. He's like, yeah, I saw her around here somewhere. But yeah, it's just so interesting that we're following Gully, the cat, through Gully's actual memories. You know, I find it sort of a symbol, symbolic, ironic, I don't know, situation. Oh, so there's Gully. Gully the cat, but of course the real Gully was also here. Cora! <laughs> Poor Alita, she keeps uh, yelling, come back! Chasing this uh, cat around. Of course, whenever the cat appears, it's like the scene uh, sort of freezes. It's like, see you later, Hugo. I'm going to have to chase Gully down here some more. But of course, you notice Yugo is not moving, not saying anything. He is like a doll. And Alita's like, What? Yugo, what's wrong? Why are you just, you know, standing there not moving? And of course, chaos appears. Again, each time. So in each of these scenarios, chaos is hacking in and trying to get uh, Gully to remember. He's like, Yugo sadly is dead. And, you know, in your dream version, you know, of course, he's still there, still alive. It's like, but you need to remember, you know, you need to remember the real world and, you know, the real things, the, the good things and also the bad things and the sad things. You know, it's important to have all of those experiences and uh, not ignore them.
So yeah, the naming gets confusing here. Uh, we're going to have a backflash, if you remember, of uh, Yugo's fateful end when he fell off the pipe. So Gully is you know, finally starting to get these images back, these uh, memories of what actually happened. And, of course, Nova appears to force Chaos out of here because he's messing with things. This would start to creep me out. It's like everywhere I go, suddenly Nova appears. It's like, dude, you are a total stalker. All right, more long dialogue there of Gully asking Nova questions, but you know, Nova denies it all. So here we are in street. I'm just going to each of the places that, uh, you know, Gully had her original memories. Oh, hey, here he is, Vector again. Good old Vector, but he's not some black market evil guy. She calls him Vector-san. So you looking for cyborg parts or something? But actually he's like more of a nice friendly broker rather than uh, you know being on the black market kind of thing. And of course he says he'll help find uh, Gully if he sees Gully the cat. I mean, I really find it interesting talking to these people again and them having uh, completely different personalities. All the characters from the first few episodes. And a street, you know, this street area seems to be a really nice, friendly place. You know, everybody's on good terms, nothing bad ever happens here. Let's talk to this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to say what she probably is, but in this world, she's a nice, friendly Oneitan, who says she saw Gully the cat running down. Hey, you called me Obasan? Somebody with a cute face like you? That's rude. Gomen nasai, Oneitan. That's right, you should call me Onei-san. Hey, even Gully herself, well, even Alita's personality is different here. You know, she's more subdued, which is what Nova wants. Man, I swear, the, the name thing is so confusing, and, and especially because it's reversed in the English version, completely the opposite from the Japanese original. But yeah, I can still officially call her Alita for the time being. Because here in the simulation, she is Alita. But she's not a battle angel, actually. She is street, cute street girl Alita. She doesn't do any fighting, so... Now battle angel is a incorrect title. And, of course, we're going to talk to Makaku again, if you remember. The game's first major boss. It hurts! It hurts my head! What's wrong? Don't worry about me. But uh, my brain... Remember, uh, Makaku has to eat other people's brains in order to, uh, you know, stem the pain. Get the endorphins... So he's explaining that again, but what's different here is he's like, I'm going to be a good guy and not do it. You know, I'm not going to kill people and, and take their brains. I'm just going to deal with the pain. And of course, Gully the cat is there and she runs away. And of course, Alita's like, what's wrong? You know, once again, Makaku doesn't move. Here he's frozen. You know, sort of like a doll here in a simulation. We have an interesting there. He's the different Makaku. He's like, I'm going to be a good person and not eat anybody's brains. I'm just going to, you know, struggle through the pain and do the best that I can. Whereas the real Makaku, you know, he pretty much 
had to kill people and eat their brains just because his pain was just so intense. So Chaos is trying to remind uh, Gully of the fight that she had with Makaku and, you know, truly the way he originally was. And like, remember his memory as a warrior, you know, what he went through and his dying words to you. Remember, uh, Makaku had a long story to tell Gully when he was defeated. So that was an important part of her past. And once again, rinse and repeat. Chaos is being forcefully logged out of the system. Much to Alita's surprise again, and Nova just happens to be there again. It's like, yeah, that, that would be creepy if I, wherever I walked, Nova just sort of appeared. So, hey, Nova Oji-san. What is it? She calls him Nova Oji-san. It's nothing. And then she's, you know, thinking about these images here to herself. What do they mean? These uh, memories that she's seeing. So I've, as I've been going through these areas, the, the map screen is less and less, and now I've only got Ido Daisuke's uh, repair shop to go to here. So this will be the last uh, memory in this sequence. Finally, there's Gully. We've made it full circle, and Gully has come home. And Chaos appears again. It's you again. Yeah, it's hard to, like, switch the names in my head because he keeps calling her Gully, of course. And she's Alita, but she's really Gully. And the name Alita is fake. So once again, Nova is, ex or Chaos, sorry. Chaos is explaining that this is all a simulation. You know, 10 years ago, Zapan destroyed uh, this building you know, where you used to live and where Ido used to live. You're living in a dream world. So wake up. And of course, Nova shows up again because saying Shitskoi, you are very persistent to chaos. Nova is incredibly impressed that he could get through the protection of the computer system. Chaos must be quite the hacker. But this time he's going to force Chaos out of the system permanently so that he can't mess with what Nova has set up here. And I feel weird not putting commentary in because yeah, a lot of this game is just sort of silent. Awkward silence during a lot of these uh, dialogues. But yeah, Nova's saying for sure this time, you know, I'm going to be kicking you out of the system and you won't be showing up anymore. Haha! Kore wa masaka! But a surprise! Den! If you remember, Den is the sort of samurai guy that was using the giant centaur body to fight uh, Gully in several episodes ago. So using a psychometry, if you remember, Chaos and Den sort of have this duality sharing the same bottle. Uh, not bottle, body. Did I say bottle? And so Chaos is using his last attempt here to uh, help Gully convince her by uh, releasing uh, Den, the memories of Den, and this will force Gully to fight. And you know, Gully has always been a warrior at heart. So with this, you know, we haven't fought in this entire simulation. And so being forced to fight is really gonna, you know, knock Gully into her senses again. So Nova says, Alita, run away. Quick, you need to get away from here. I'll take care of this. Don't worry about it. So, Alita, please run. Run to a safe place. 
and Alita says, Nova Oji-san, I have to fight. What? What are you saying? No, Alita. What do you have to fight for? You have no reason to fight. But it's... It's because that's who I am, for myself. All right, so we have our battle outfit back. And we're gonna fight the samurai version of Den. Remember Den, or Electricity, he is the uh, leader of Barjack, the uh, anti zalim group, the rebels, I guess you should call them. Man, a lot of these bosses are just ridiculous with their blocking. Can't get any hits in. And if I try to do a block, it just doesn't work. Oh man, the timing has got to be just right. Okay, once again, first boss fight. I lose. But hey, we'll be back in a brief moment here. And I'll finish him off for you guys. Okay, we're back. I need to use some more plasma attacks. Is that hit? I can't block when he does that triple swing there. I can't defend against it at all. Sheesh. Yeah, plasma attacks are definitely the way to go here. Just gotta catch him when he's not, you know, when he's not guarding. Ooh. Wow, that was actually pretty close. Uh, if you're playing this game, make sure to save just before that fight, because that's a pretty tough fight. And you don't want to uh, go through that whole series again. Nova's like, no, no, it can't be my dream sequence, my beautiful world. It's destroyed. Don't destroy it. So finally, uh, Alita has broken free. Oh yeah, we're back to Gully, so I can call her Gully again. Her uh, her name is back to normal here, and she realizes that Alita was a false name, not a real person. So that means in the English version, Alita was the name of the cat, which I I just find is weird. But so she's like, I'm. I'm a bad person, aren't I? Probably. You know, she wants battle and war. Ido just says, take care of yourself, Gully. We have the destroyed version again of Ido's house. And with that, we've broken out of Nova's simulation. Once again, much to Nova's surprise. But yeah, he's he's pretty upset. You know, saying, I've created the perfect world for you, Alita. A world where you would be protected, where you would be safe from harm. You know, wouldn't be damaged from anything of that. So how dare you break free from that? It was all to protect Alita. Everything was for you. But of course, Alita's gonna, oh uh, yeah. Do the, take his brain off. So for her too, you know, she was, you know, she was actually happy to be in that simulation. She wished that that was what the world was like, but you know, she's got to face reality. So we're back here in Nova's uh, base, Granite Inn. And uh, we've run back to the computer control room where Chaos was, you know, helping Gully this whole time to break free from the simulation. Yeah, surprisingly, Chaos has been a pretty uh, powerful ally 
for a gully up, up to this point. She says, thanks, Chaos. You really helped me back there. I probably would have been stuck in that, you know, dream sequence forever if you hadn't, uh, you know, kept barging in and reminded me, you know, about all the memories and stuff. So she's thanking him for his interference. All righty. So the granite end explodes. Ah, ha, ha, ha in typical video game fashion and sinks back into the ground. Nagai tatakairatta na, Gali. That was a long fight, Gali. Whew. Yeah, long story arc here, that's for sure. Long fight, fighting with Nova. But now it's all over, so what are you going to do now, Gali? She's not sure. Oh, that's right. I'm free now. These ten years, she's worked for Tuned, but uh, now she's free. You know, Bigot's gone, and she has 100% her freedom back. So, Gully is thinking, uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and go see uh, Fogia. If you remember, you know, Fogia is her new kind of love interest. So, hey, let's go see how Foggy is doing. Maybe we'll get some happy ending ness in this story after all. Chaos wants to find out what happened to Rue. If you remember, that was Gully's tuned operator. But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause the game here, guys. I want to thank you for watching. I know it was a long story part uh, for this episode. But thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Make sure to join me, and we'll see uh, where this story leads from here. Should be pretty interesting.